What's up, everybody? It's your boy Ooch, and I'm here with my brother Ooch, and we are back again, once again. How y'all doing today? All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, what's going on? It's your boy, The Boys. We're back with another banger episode of the Full Power Podcast, number 33, for everyone that's keeping in track. And as always, the uh well you know it's 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 pretty safe to say that this this guy is definitely one of the co-hosts for sure even when kai does come back so again kai is almost he's all he's almost back it's a few more weeks and he'll be back and back again once again as well but brother Uj, my my dude how you doing today sir chilling chilling perfect for thanksgiving you know getting oh, yeah. the vibes correct corrected <laughs> the, yeah, getting the vibes corrected and getting the uh, the uh, workout in because I was definitely taking my time today, making sure that my fitness was good in case I actually did pig out tomorrow. So I don't even think the gym is going to be open tomorrow, honestly. For me, at least. I don't know what your situation is like. Oh, I'm not going to. I can't go tomorrow anyway because <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be too like busy just trying to get ready and then, you know, going to... Yep, Reese, yep, yep. Reese family's house anyway so yeah other than that you know it's, it's another week another uh another chapter finally came out so uh, unfortunately like i mentioned in the video which at this point should be out of my reaction of the latest chapter which is chapter 78 of dragon ball super um yeah you'll know that uh unfortunately we weren't able to talk about it last week just because of the timing of when we recorded these verses when the chapter decided to come out which was the same day i believe as when we released these episodes so here we are we're talking about it now and uh you know whatever comes uh from that we're also going to be talking about the the latest and dare i say greatest dragon ball video game <laughs> so so i'll leave it up to you do you want to go over some of the comments from last week's episode first do you want to go over the chapter first or do you want me to tell you about this new game first uh, we could do like the comments last i guess or some shit okay so you want to save the comments for last this episode okay yeah that's fine all right so then what do you want you want you want me to tell you about the game or you want me to go over this chapter real quick i did a, did a game did a game all right so first and foremost ladies and gentlemen there is a brand new game out there for those that may not uh be aware or following anything that's going on in the dragon ball realm that's of course why you have us here to talk about these kind of things and it is not a game that i'm pretty sure you my dude would expect or ever ask for and i feel like the same sentiment is shared amongst many others in the fandom of dragon ball and possibly the the video game department but to my surprise apparently there are some out there and i learned this obviously through people commenting on said reaction video that i did for this trailer that people did want a game like this apparently which i am just kind of like okay that's still random to me but either way they are coming out with a game called Dragon Ball The Breakers, okay? Now, off rip, what kind of game does that sound like to you? <laughs> this just sounds like a fucking 3DS game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so like, sure. what kind, like, how would it play then if it was on the 3DS, do you it think? Was, I'm not gonna say similarly to that that one imported game I got that was actually pretty fire, but I don't know if you remember the one I'm talking about. Oh, are you talking about the I Dragon think, Ball Kai yeah, one? Yeah, Kai, yeah. That, 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 nah, that, see, that was a good RPG. And that I'm, was, I'm actually, that was pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, that, was a, that looked like a dope game. I never got the chance to play it, unfortunately, but yeah, no. I, I could tell you right now, this new game is definitely not like that at all. So let me try to explain it to you the best way that I possibly can, right? So... Do you know the game Dead by Daylight? Yeah, see, I've heard of it, but I've never, like, I don't know what it's about, honestly. Okay, perfect. That makes it even better. Let me let me break it down for you even, even easier, right? Do you know the game Hide and Go Seek? 
Yeah. So basically, this game is a hide and go seek game where players are random NPC looking background Dragon Ball characters that are trying to run away and not be found by Cell in the Trunks timeline. Well, you might as well throw that game in the fucking garbage. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh -huh. Wait, where, 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 what, what, is this console or what? I oh, oh, this is, this is a console release game. This is going to be on all of the platforms, I'm, I'd imagine. So there's no fighting involved? You're telling me you're just there, You're literally hiding, running. I mean, you do get to like throw attacks out. Like, uh, there's a few, there's a few shots in the trailer where you like, you can shoot missiles, I guess, with, uh with uh oolong i think if, if i remember that correctly from the trailer but i was so thrown off dude let me tell you i reacted to this live in front of my my chat how is that even a game <laughs> that sounds like a fucking app when you really put it <laughs> when you really think about it like that's like an app that's more like an app game is it yeah and i don't know man. even they fucking up bruh yeah, I don't, I don't understand why a game like this exists. I don't understand I don't why, why people. For Dragon Ball. Like, yeah, well, yeah, that's another thing. Like, I want, I, I was actually curious where the root of all of this came from, because like, where and when did the conversation start about uh, a possible Dead by Daylight esque, hide and go seek esque Dragon Ball game? Like, why this IP? and why you know just a lot of why like i don't understand like out of all of the games and let me tell you there's been there's been dragon ball games there's been so many dragon ball games they go back all the way to the fucking 80s okay they've had that many games over the years since the 80s okay and most of these games are literally rpgs action adventure fighting games stuff like this yeah right yeah and I've never seen a game, I've never heard of another Dragon Ball game or an anime game at that point that is like this. Uh, I, uh, I wonder how much money they put into this game. Hey, don't tell me this shit's $70. Oh, see, and, and see, and here's the thing, right? Obviously, this is a Bandai Namco game. So in, in normal, natural Bandai Namco fashion, I am more than positive that this shit is gonna go for a full price type of, you know, mm. price range. Well, good luck to them. <laughs> yeah. I but... hope I hope they get their return of investment. Otherwise, that is some trash. <laughs> I don't... But see, that's the thing. Like, if I'm gonna be real, I don't think they're gonna fucking make that shit. Like, I'm not... Like, like... I would love to see how their sales come out. Because, like... Yes. It's not. There's no like. What? <laughs> like what? Nah. I don't know, man. Yeah. Like who knows? A game like that. Who knows? It might be one of those games where we're shitting on it now, and then you play it, and it might be mad fun. But I don't even. And and that's the thing. Like I don't even like Dead by Daylight. But conceptually, I mean, hide and go seek is a very rudimentary, elementary concept. Everybody knows what it is. Everybody knows how it's played or how it should be played. You got somebody that is the person that's looking for everyone else while they're hiding and they're Why seeking. Why is it like that one game that we used to play that was hype as fuck? I forget what it was fucking called. Oh, Manhunt? No, not Manhunt. The 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 one uh, game on the phone that we played. Uh, oh, Among Us? Among Us, yeah. Like what? Like it gives you like a Among Us type of vibe, low key. If that's how yeah. you're describing it. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I, yeah, I guess. Like, Among Us is well, Among Us is very different in comparison to Dead by Daylight. But I guess like along yeah, because you have to like the same action. theme. Yeah, like it conceptually. Well, no. Well, here's the big difference. There's one killer, and everyone knows who the killer is in a game like this. Like whether it's Dead by Daylight or Hide and Go Seek, like you know who the person is that you're trying to hide from and escape from and run away from 
Whereas in Among Us, you don't know. And there's multiple. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, like... Uh, the, the idea that yeah like this is a game where you have to run away from cell is like okay like to me either way is there is very random and the fact that we haven't seen actually no like let me rephrase that the fact is the fact of the matter is is if you think about the last time we've ever had cell involved in anything <laughs> recent or relevant right it's literally been since dragon ball z Okay, if you want to count GT when he showed up with Frieza, sure, fine, whatever, right? That, that, a lot of people will overlook that anyway, right? But if you want to be technical, sure, you can say that. And think about all the time that has been passed, that has gone since then. And this is how they're going to fucking bring Cell back for the first time in all these years? Like, not even in the story, not even in the anime. They're going to feature this guy as a selling point for this game. No, no, that's just disappointing, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's just confusing, honestly. Yeah. So, but yeah, there, there it is. There's, there, and also, um, there's gonna be a beta for it. So, if I'm able to get in on that beta, I, like I said in my in my reaction, I will give it a fair chance. Just to really, you know, Wait. get uh, an experience behind it. So this is, is it, is it going to be multiplayer type of thing? Yeah, like people, yeah. Like one yeah, person is going to be fucking sell looking for these people and then vice versa? Like. I, yeah, I think, yeah. So kind of like with Dead by Daylight, like you can play as the killer and then uh i i would imagine in this game you would be able to play as cell if you were trying to be the person that seeks out everyone else and then all the other players are the ones that's trying to run away from you and whatnot so again it's like a big game of cat and mouse except it's dragon ballified so hella random i definitely wouldn't have ever saw this coming or have ever asked for it because <laughs> At this point, I mean, I would rather je them just, you know, continue to make more DLC for Dragon Ball Fighters, more DLC for Kakarot. And I mean, they already got Dokkan Battle and Legends doing pretty well, holding themselves up on mobile. So they got all their departments pretty much like taken care of. Outside, like what? Like I also said this in the video. I'm like, dude, they never did a beat 'em up outside of Dragon Ball GT transformation on the freaking uh on the uh Game Boy Advance. Do you remember that game? <laughs> I I'm not. Sh I I think I do, low key. Yeah, it the was G a fun ass GT, game. Right? Yeah, it was a, it was a GT like side scroll beat 'em up where you could play. Between Goku, Pan, and Trunks. Yo, and I, feel like, I remember yeah. that. That shit mm -hmm. was pretty fucking. I, I pretty, we used to do like link ups and shit. Yeah. Yep. Yo. Yep, we did. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was, yeah. yeah, that's tough. Now that was fun. See, and that's what I'm saying, right? They could have, if they made another type of game like that. I'm sure people would probably be way more behind it and way more excited for something like that because. That's more practical. It makes more sense. That would probably be, like, that would be on like the Switch though, honestly. I don't I would I wouldn't see nah. it as a console game. And ne it's never been on a console technically. Well, I mean, like well, a game okay. like that. Beat well, I'm mostly talking about the fucking uh like the the one game on the GameCube. Uh you remember what I was talking that one? That one game? It was like the the saga shit. Sagas, we didn't we play that on PlayStation? Oh, wait, was it on PlayStation? Well, it was. I'm pretty sure it was on all the consoles, but yeah, uh, I yeah. Well, yeah. I, trust me, I I know, I that was know. Fun, yeah, see, and that and see, and that that kind of a game, kind of. Well, yeah, that that one's more of a direct action adventure, which is still very common for a Dragon Ball kind of game. But I said, I also said this. I was like, yo. Why haven't we had another beat em up? Why haven't we had another Muso style type game? Which is the warrior, like the Dynasty Warriors kind of game. You remember the Gundam shit we used to play? Yeah. So that kind imagine that with Dragon Ball. 
you're like you know you're you're your favorite dragon ball character mm, and yo, you're going around you see, fighting mad people you remember the fucking psp yes uh, there was there's literally that like they used to go kind of wild on the psp i got cat <laughs> with, with some of these games like like literally what you're talking about here like that was on like psp from my uh memory like, are you sure like to an extent at least like because i don't i don't believe it was really i'm not sure if it was i don't think it was like an online type of play but like well, like regarding the fact that you were able to you use um like certain characters or whatever and like kind of fly around kind of like a xenoverse type of type of thing like like you would have to kind of go back in time to, to see how it played out but like that it gives me those kind of vibes like i because i don't think you ever actually played what i played on the psp like nah, in that yeah nah so you don't really know what i'm talking about but yeah <laughs> like what so... you're what you're talking about right now pretty much like being able to <laughs> what like fly around essentially and kind of fight people like gundam in a sense or yeah like, like in that type that, of style that was a Muso style yeah yeah like that like that to an extent was like on psp a little bit from from what i remember kind of it was cool but so like if it, if it like if it wouldn't even i wouldn't call it a remaster by any means like they would just make it completely new if they did some shit like that yeah probably yeah but i mean i, I could like that I, I would be kind of cool so hold on my question my question for you then are you sure you're not confusing it with how they did the budokai games because if you remember budokai 3 on playstation 2 the story mode allowed you to fly around mm, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah they, they let you fly around however you when you got to certain locations that's when you know that's it, it loaded in like the fighting game exactly yeah. So I'm I'm wondering if you're thinking of that because oh, yeah. oh. I remember they had they did have a Budokai on the PSP. It was like Budokai Tag or some shit like that. So if they had that type that same hey. st type of story mode, then that's probably what you're thinking of because if they had a, a a Dynasty Warriors style Dragon Ball Z game, that shit yeah. I definitely would have played it. I don't even know like that, bro. I was too fucking young to like really really remember <laughs> that shit because that was nah, psp nah. days bro like, oh yeah that yeah. shit's out the window been out the uh -huh. window but oh yeah for a very long time yeah I mean, but yeah that goes that goes to show you that out of all the all the types of games and plus like like they, they could have had like a rhythm game they could have a racing game they didn't have there's four categories i just named that they totally could could have like dived into to make something new outside of the usual you know rpg style fighting game style kind of games for dragon ball but nope I mean, they went with this freaking but, hide and go seek shit but you, like you can only do so much like you don't want to go honestly like especially with dragon ball like i i i personally wouldn't even want to really go outside the box and like do that type of shit like because dragon ball is literally fighting like it's not yeah, it's not yeah. meant for no dance battles or fucking racing or whatever the case may be. <laughs> this shit yeah, is yeah, strictly yeah. fighting. Like it's it's literally meant for RPG purposes or or like freestyle fighting or whatever the case may be, like um like Budokai, Tenkaichi type shit, like fucking what Xenoverse or mm -hmm. like that type of style fighters. Yeah. Like it, it shouldn't it shouldn't be they, they shouldn't be making games that literally are fucking pointless essentially i agree like outside of yeah. the fighting perspective or storyline perspective like it doesn't make sense because that's not what dragon ball is it's not it's not that soft shit <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> like that's what i'm a, that's what i'm gonna call it soft shit like it's literally yeah. like that's what dragon ball is like there's yeah, no nah, like, i, I yeah. agree with there's, you there's no side of the story of dragon ball in general where where they can take it to some type of soft outside of the box or out like for a game like it doesn't make sense and even if that was the case that shit would be boring as fuck yeah that's 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 mad true and that's kind of like why 
I would lean way more towards having a beat em up or a Dynasty Warriors style game. Because Bandai Namco literally was responsible for like all four of the Gundam Warrior games. Like I checked like right after I did that reaction, I literally went on Wiki and I was like list of Bandai Namco games. And right there, Dynasty Warriors Gundam, Dynasty Warriors Gundam that 2. Shit, that I feel like that shit would be hype as fuck, not gonna lie. Yes, like like what imagine I'm like imagine like a team battle type of scenario where like you, like you and it's multiplayer like like yeah, let's say like a team fire. of team of three team of four whatever the case may be even team of two like you would you would like your boys your fam or some shit and like you're going yes. against other niggas that like pick yes. their own character or whatever the case may be as part of the story yes line. and then <laughs> yes. and then it's a free fight like it's a free like it's like you know it's like some fucking uh whatchamacallit it's like some xenoverse type of fighting like but with multiple people and it's like a big battleground type of thing yeah, I mean, that that's what I'm saying. Lit. No, yes. I'm thinking about it. These motherfuckers are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Like, nah. Yeah. Dude. Where are they getting the their funny, ideas the, from, bro? Like, I don't know, man. That's that's It's about to be like fucking point. 20, the year 2050 by the time they think of this shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. No. Dude, it's crazy because even at, even at this point in time, Think about how long Xenoverse 2 has been out for. They still haven't even made a third one. They just keep putting DLC yeah, in it after ever, ever so often. Like, to me, that's it. Nah, that's OD. Fuck all that shit. I want Dynasty now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want a Gundam freaking... fighting style type shit with Dragon Dude, Ball. That shit would be dope. Tell me how they have a Dynasty Warriors game for Fire Emblem and Zelda. But they do not have one for Dragon Ball. Yet. I'm not even, yo, like, I'm not trying to put it even into the com a, a competitive aspect, cause I, I've never heard of like Gundam actually being competitive, like within that oh, realm. Oh, you, you need to watch Maxi Bustan then. That's a competitive. It's it's pretty OD, but yeah, keep going. But like, but I, like I don't know, cause like the only thing, cause yeah, like Dragon Ball is um like a fighting style game so therefore it can be competitive for certain um i would say for certain games like fighters like it's competitive or whatever like yeah like is is there a thing such so called like as being a pro in this shit essentially well not well okay if you're doing a muso game which is the dynasty warrior style that's more like you said that's more of a game where you at most you would just team up with people you wouldn't face people because remember these types of games you're fighting hordes of enemies it's, mm. it's basically like horde or um zombies in a sense except it's not obviously zombies but the whole point of a muso game is you are who you are in the game and you're going from point a to point b on a map and from in you know in in between your travels you know you're encountering hella enemies to fight yeah, off yeah, and okay. then so I, yeah. I get i get that but take all the zombie shit out and make it multiplayer like so you're only facing four other people for example type of thing well then at that point then you're just playing xenoverse at that point but like, with, and with a team essentially yeah well, okay, but then, yeah, like I said, like at that <laughs> point you're playing Xenoverse Shit. because that's the, that at that point it is no longer a Muso game. You, if you the second you have direct combat combat between yourself and another real player, even if it's a team, even if it's one on one, that is no longer a Muso. You're playing like you're 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 playing something completely different. And whether you want to call it a battle royale or you want to call it a fighting game you know it takes elements from both in a sense and plus they've already done this like don't you remember when we were in japan they had a game like yeah, that already. Right? I think, right? I, Wait. yeah I, I forget what it was called it but was the we, show on the arcade right yes that shit was fun <laughs> yeah see like they they've already done that but, but it's they not, haven't done it it's since. not console it's not for us <laughs> in the u.s it's for them <laughs> yeah that's Japan, another problem man. in and of itself. Maybe oh, maybe they, they be keeping on to everything. Yeah. We it all, took it right, took right. them eight years for us to get Super Dragon Ball Heroes I'm on sure console. Ain't even fair, man. 
it's yeah, it's not. Not. now that I remember, like they yeah. literally have their arcade. They have all of them. We have shit. <laughs> we ain't got nothing. Yeah, I remember when we went uh, you, that you did actually get to play, and I feel like I might have tried it, but I don't remember. Shit. That was put that one of the games that you put on. Be nasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's 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 the type of shit I would love to see with Dragon Ball because they could to they totally could like. It, Dragon Ball is an IP that is so strong that you could put it on anything and it'll there's a high chance that it'll sell decent at, at the least you know like anything Trust like if they decided to if they decided to make a battle royale style Dragon Ball game I wouldn't be about it but I'm sure people would be for it you know yeah like, no, that would, it would be different like it would, uh, like Shit, I, like especially if the, not like a few things for for it to be kind of successful or whatever. Like, the gameplay has to be good, like it has to right. be enhanced or advanced or whatever. The graphics obviously need to be top tier, like yeah, you, know, you need that. And then like mm -hmm. the, the the whole combat shit, fighting or whatever has to be spiked up. <laughs> or or you know like it needs to like it needs to make sense though too like uh -huh. like i would say like stick to those three things and you'll have yourself a game <laughs> all right yeah that's fair as like yeah. what like keeping it simple kind of thing like because yeah what, what else are they gonna really do if you're, if you're just asking for like a battle royale type of thing essentially or one of those like japan arcade games that they haven't fucking imported um <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so like it's really it's really graphics combat style and fucking and mm -hmm. uh, what is whatever else i fucking said but yeah i mean because realistically like if, if, if i mean uh, i i i personally wouldn't want them to do a br i'd rather them do like a, like a war a muso game or a beat em up first and foremost but if they were to do a br for dragon ball i feel like it would like I imagine how Fortnite is, mm -hmm. except they wouldn't use guns. They would just use key blasts as their guns. And then if it came down to obviously the close quarters combat when you got close to a person, you know, melees would legitimately just be straight up fighting. You like see, you just do I, a combo, yeah, whatever. See, I don't even it. know if I would take it that far to make it like, like act like a Fortnite type of shit. I would not want to compare it to that shit. Well, that's what a BR order. is. That's the battle royale game. I'm just, you know, using it as an example, to, as a, as like a base point for the conversation. Yeah, I so. guess. I mean, they would have to if they were to ever think about doing that type of shit. They would need to limit the amount of people. There ain't gonna be no 100 people in that shit. Like that. Yo, that, sh that shit would be unbelievable. <laughs> what, we're gonna see 100 fucking Kamehamehas out there. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It would get kind of OD. Like, it, it's gotta make sense. Like, like someone. I don't yeah. know. Man. That shit. That something like that might kind of. It might get kind of OD. It, well, hey, hold on though, because now that now that we're talking about this, now you're getting me to feel to think about certain situations. Like, dude, they could make a game based off the Tournament of Power. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Conceptually, you have your 12 universes or whatever or yeah you have like your your 8 to 12 universes that has a team of 10 or you know maybe you don't have to make it a team of 10 you can make it like four or five to make it more practical and just like in the tournament of power they're all there fighting each other at the same time and there's a time limit and you know it all it all comes down to who can survive and not get knocked off or not get defeated or whatever i mean mm. i don't know like they would just have to do it right it would have to it would have to play crisp like you said but that's, that's, that's not crisp. easy it would every like it would have to like all the details would have to be crispy clear and clean like there can't be no fuck ups on that shit i think i can do that yeah, I don't know what type yeah, of mastermind I, head ass again. Fucking think of that shit or do it, but yeah, dude, that see, like that's a, that's a game that is like that's a very hard like like I just conceptualized it right, but then to actually like execute it is completely yeah, different. no, because there, there would be advanced movement, like there's not gonna be no fucking on the ground type of thing, like niggas are gonna be flying around, 
and it's gonna be Dragon Ball like <laughs> if it wants to be a Dragon Ball game. Because yeah, it's not gonna like, be no Budokai Tenkaichi with five people on the fucking playing. What? No. no. Yeah, and 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 on, on, on that kind of scale, like think about how many fighters were actually on the field during Tournament of Power at one time. Yep. You know when it first started, yep. like that's kind of OD. So I don't know. Whatever. Like. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, it just goes goes to show you, like even on the spot. We're literally coming up with, with with all these different ideas that they could have done, but they went with the hide and go seek fucking idea. I swear, they gotta hire new people, bro. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think I think really what it comes down to is, I feel like there's just a disconnect between fans, like actual fans of whatever the IP is. For example, like obviously we're talking about Dragon Ball, but like I can give you another one that is lacking is Power Rangers, right? I feel like the disconnect, what I'm trying to say is they may, they may have people that are staffed that are obviously fans, right? But they're not like hardcore fans. And I think that makes a humongous difference when it comes down to producing and conceptualizing, you know, games, especially because when you have a person that knows the franchise that knows what it is the source material like to the bone and then they take that knowledge and that passion and they apply it towards a piece of entertainment media for others to enjoy whether they're casual fans or hardcore fans like i feel like it, when you have that your 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 piece of entertainment your game your whatever is gonna it has a way higher chance of succeeding and being long lasting versus these projects that you question like are these people even aware of what the fuck they're doing like mm -hmm. like like i remember for uh dragon balls uh dragon ball z kakarot there was a whole discrepancy that they fucked up something a part of, with, with the story that was a crucial to the original obvious like storyline of just how dragon ball z went and it wasn't even it was on like one of the most basic type shits i forget exactly what it was but when it happened people were kind of like blowing it up on twitter and online and like and you know how fans can get they'll look at anything any piece of anything that seems official or has an official stamp on it from you know you know whoever and they will let it rock and 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 feel like oh yeah this is how it is because it happened in the fucking video game and then it takes a guy like geekdom to literally make a four minute video to say hey guys let me just remind you that this is a video game <laughs> and this is not canon it's a fucking video game <laughs> okay yeah. like Video games can do whatever they want, realistically, because video games, they they have to make essentially filler content to uh, fill in the blanks, you know, like when you go from one part of the story to the next part of the story, even if it's so minute, there's going to be in between shit that you're obviously going to do, especially with a game that's like a story based game, because like I can tell you right now for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, you can go around you can go on your side quest, side missions, do all this type of shit that definitely wasn't happening in the show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's just the nature of it. It's a game versus the actual source material. So, yeah, people gotta, you know, keep keep that in mind. But you know, something like this is gonna happen. But <sighs> fucking video games, bro. It is what it is. Let's go to the goddamn what the chapter, or whatever. I bet so here we go ladies and gentlemen it is that time it is time to review this month's chapter of dragon ball super head to thewaypro.com and use my code uchi10 to save 10% off the entire website okay so I will tell you this right now this chat this shit was actually kind of fire I'm not even gonna lie 
this chapter was a very good one i'm gonna try to go over it as quick as we possibly can so that way we just get to the discussion portion because there's some shit i want to talk to you about specifically that happened in this john and i also am curious to see if it, you think of it on your own first <laughs> from what i'm telling you what happens right so pretty much off of what happened in the last chapter when they was basically explaining the truth to granola about how it wasn't the saiyans that killed his mom it was actually the heaters and bardock is the one that saved them and bardock actually defeated or presumably defeated gas who is this kid boo look-alike kind of character who i have been saying is gonna end up being the true threat in this arc right yeah. and i also said that i feel like the whole theme of this arc is exactly what it is called like the 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 world's the, the the strongest in the universe right and i made it very clear i said probably a good chance this wish that the heaters are trying to make is they're gonna try to make gas the strongest in the universe even though granola wished that shit first right and so of course they're you know kind of still you know going back and forth with this whole like like granola's like freak how can this be elik the one who murdered my mother and like they, like he's got uh manito by the fucking collar and you know he's explaining like he only got to understand this was the only way for us to survive at the time and then vegeta was like one that like he, he he got right to the point he was like well did he win did Bardock defeat Gas? And then Manito was like, oh, he sure did. That's how we survived. And I was like, oh, let's go. So, and then, and so here's the first part of interesting uh, bit that I, that obviously I'm highlighting here is that Vegeta set goes on to say, Bardock was a low class warrior as far as I know. Was Gas really that weak? And then Manito says, nope, just the opposite. Gas was very strong, but, and then they get cut off because then they notice that the sky goes black which means that they was making the wish already so this chapter is moving like mm. the pacing was fucking great because not only did they do exactly what i predicted with you know gas being wished like that wish was for gas like they literally was like he's he wished for him to be the strongest in the universe right but the fact that they cut off manito in the middle of explaining how strong gas was at the time i feel like they're dropping a little hint and tease here with what actually went down between bardock versus gas what bardock right? versus him <laughs> oh okay well, we'll get to that <laughs> oh we'll get to that we, we, we'll get to that part um so yeah obviously they go they pan over to where elik is at he summons the dragon um he they don't exactly they don't they don't show or you don't see on screen what he word for word wished for but it's obviously very um implied that he wished for gas to be the strongest in the universe because the next page vegeta and goku have like a freak out moment where they can sense an enormous power signature right and they even confirm it by even saying that uh the oh that granola you know granola is like yo i i know that power right so it's implied like okay they recognize th this is an enormous power on the way granola knows of this power it's coming and not to mention this dude gas he got like a whole new look to him mm. so and he looks fire i'm not even gonna lie this dude looks od yes. like yeah <laughs> yeah <Yes>. dude <laughs> yeah like matter of fact here i'll actually i'll send you you can check check your discord i'm gonna send you a picture of what this dude looked like okay so you have a reference uh, as to what this this man looked like in the jump why the fuck <laughs> <laughs> why he look similar I told you he he looks like Kid Buu with hair. It's not even Kid. It's not even like I'm trying to think. <laughs> There's definitely another comparison. <laughs> okay, well if you think about it, yeah, let me know because no. I like I would like to hear that. The, the piccolo ears. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He definitely got them the Mexican pointers. Yeah, so so he comes through. So clearly there was definitely a wish that was made for him because he didn't even look like this before. He was a lot smaller and now apparently he grew in fucking inches too. So Bro. this man is ready. So he comes through and uh and let's see. So then so so granola's like yes i use them to become the strongest in the universe explaining to goku and vegeta that that's what he used the dragon balls for and goku's like oh that explains it because obviously granola was going toe to toe with both of these freaking guys at one earlier and granola wastes no time you know how every like major fucking dragon ball villain they always gotta do finger beams right so this dude looking like freaking frieza kibu whatever he had the finger beam shot it straight down and he was literally like it was almost like he was splitting the fucking earth beneath him he cut the entire spaceship that they came on in half clean right and what's even more interesting about this guy is i feel like he's the first character that we've ever seen that he has this ability to create weapons at will yeah like he he created like a pitchfork that was like four sides and he tossed it at granola impaled him instantly okay and then the fight continues goku tries to go at him and, and with a snap of a finger granola basically um attached weighted blocks to all four limbs of goku and he instantly dropped down to the fucking floor Yo, I'm telling you, this dude gas is OD, right? So then, of course, you know, the fight continues. He makes an axe. He goes to swing for Goku's head. Granola saves him with a shot. Then gas charges at Granola. He creates a fucking spiked ball staff. Starts fucking up Granola even more. Like, dude, this dude, Granola, had it looked like he had no fighting chance right now. Gas was just ridiculous ridiculously giving it to to granola so then on the side while he was you know fighting him uh manaito the Nemec the namekian he was uh freeing goku from those weights and then he's like i have a request and i know i have no right to ask for favors right now but please save granola for me and in in goku fashion he goes sure i'll do what i can right <laughs> like <laughs> like that's our goku right so the fight continues and then they even have like a little um flashback as to when um the heaters recruited granola when he was a little kid um and he, they even basically confirmed that elik the leader was you know pretty much just trying to make use of granola because he he did seem talented because he was a good shooter and whatnot um but yeah, he said he pretty much just wanted him to work for him. And he would dispose of him when, you know, when it came time to, if he ever had to, whatever. But that is how him and Manaito survived. Because otherwise, they, they probably just would have killed him straight up, right? So, so again, uh, the fight is, of course, ensuing. However, Goku remembers that they had a sensu beam of course there's always a fucking point in every dragon ball fight like wait a minute don't we have a sensu beam like we got it we got it you yeah. know what i'm saying so he remembers because manaito was trying to heal goku but the thing with manaito is he's a very weak namekian he is no dende by any means right dende. yeah so he's trying to he's trying to heal up goku and while he's doing that that's what made him remember like yo vegeta don't you have another sense of being and vegeta's like oh yeah but i sorted my armor which he tossed away and he's like what the heck so granola's still getting his shit pounced on right and then goku's like okay i'll try to hold him down meantime you go and try to find that john and 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 for the first time i feel like and this is like you have to give credit to where, they, where, it, where it's due, even though this shit can be very predictable. However, like I said, I gotta give credit to where the credit is due. Goku straight up says, while he said that, he'll try to hold, hold it down while he's gone. He said, in the meantime, eat it as soon as you find it. And Vegeta's like, 
really? And he goes, only fair. I ate the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, very well. And he goes, don't die, Kakarot. And then Goku's like, you can transform into freaky face mode again and beat gas. So they're already throwing shade at Vegeta's Ultra Ego, right? <laughs> so Goku intervenes. He's like, listen, buddy, what you guys are doing here is just too cruel. And so then gas is like, not your place, outsider. Even with Goku going Super Saiyan Blue, gas was gas was just fucking him up like he like gas charged at him with like a spiked sword looking thing goku was able to catch it break it but then even then um goku tried to get some a little bit of offensive in gas was even able to like generate a shield he took a whole uh a key blast looking thing but even out of the fucking smoke gas was able to sneak behind Goku so fast that Goku didn't even fucking detect him and he wailed him with a fucking whack-a-mole looking mallet. Bro, what the heck? Yeah, right off the side of the head, Goku bleeding from the fucking head. And and meanwhile, all that's going down. Vegeta found the Sensu Bean. But when he comes back to the battle, Goku's already are already back to base form, all fucked up again. And in, and instead of Vegeta actually taking the Sensu Bean, he goes, rise and shine, Granola, eat this. He goes, what is it? He goes, it will restore your energy. Now eat it. And Granola's like, you had something like this all along? Eating it could have helped you beat me. And Vegeta says, and take the coward's way out? Now eat the freaking bean and rejoin the fight. Your revenge must be satisfied, no? So settle this grudge with your own strength. And, and that's another point that I was like, yo, okay, I'll give it to them. Even though this chapter was pretty spot on with what I speculated and predicted, they gave me a couple things that I did not see coming because no, naturally what happens, if they got a sense of being, it's definitely going between Goku and Vegeta, more mm -hmm. than likely Goku, Yeah. right? And this time Vegeta even surprised us even furthermore he wanted to give it to Granola. So they, they're they pretty much on the same page. They want Granola to be the one to finish the freaking job. Because now that he knows the truth, it should be him that gets the freaking finish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's where the chapter ends, right? But obviously, with going over everything that, you know, we talked about. Or I, I, that I brought up, right? Um, the big thing, obviously, is the is the seed that was planted that, of course, I feel like we could definitely go in a little bit deeper. So, yes, I I I should never uh, I should never doubt your 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 process of how you 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 take in the information as well because, like I did when I first read it, that was the first thing that I that I said. But I want to hear your thoughts on this chapter based on what you heard. Uh. Well, I mean, I guess going back to the to the whole Bardock and Gas thing, when exactly uh, did that take place? That was that like prior to Frieza and all that shit. Yeah. So yeah, so it was forty years ago, and it ha it definitely happened before they before Frieza you know destroyed all the Saiyans. So yeah. But was it like? during that point um where like bardock was coming back from like another planet or some shit or was that so or was it before yeah. that too so that's kind of also implied i mean well it's in it, it's kind of assumed from the uh dragon ball fans that i've seen online that have talked about that because people have made the connection i made the connection to my my own where i was like when i first saw the scene where it was the it was the bunch of them that were berating planet serial and they had all these other sayings um and they had one particular saying i forget his name already but he was one of the more basic looking ones um and granola's mom shot him a like like grazed his head but it left a scar right that character is actually seen in the Broly movie with Bardock flying back to uh, to, to Planet Vegeta. Mm -hmm. So, off of that uh, scene, 
people i made the connection i was like yo i wonder if during that part they were flying back from planet cereal but we don't know yeah so i mean yeah. so i mean the assumption of him going super saiyan i mean i would love to see it or or like you know <laughs> i would love to know about it obviously but like yeah but if that was the case right then mm -hmm. him going back to Frieza or Planet Vegeta basically to kind of fight Frieza off. Like, wouldn't you think that he would be able to transform back into Super Saiyan if he hit it like during that that gas fight type of shit? Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, you see what I'm trying to say? A good point. Like, yep, I know. Like, so, and I mean, maybe a counter argument could be that Bardock, um, like let, let's let's just say for for fuck's sake that this man actually hit Super Saiyan during the whole gas fight shit, and then on his way back to playing Vegeta, whatever the case may be, he he just couldn't tap into it maybe or he couldn't tap into it fast enough when mm. Frieza did hit did a death ball and all that shit. Like right. maybe maybe Frieza was just way too strong and and and. I'm, I'm gonna give Bardock the, the benefit of the doubt. This man just couldn't tap into it. Or whatever the case may be. Like, he put his all into his own little fucking blast or whatever. But mm -hmm. he just couldn't um, maybe dig deep enough or, you know, maybe it just wasn't meant to be. <laughs> or, like, I don't yeah. know. Some, some sand shit. Like, you know, maybe it just couldn't <laughs> happen. Because they, like, because sands don't always... Um, like the sands don't sands don't always like r reach above that level multiple times. From what I feel, like it it takes it takes like them practically. Um, I, I would say almost dying, <laughs> or or like kind of like yeah. a Goku type of thing. Like this man has only ever like reached the level to where he can, he may not be able to control. I would say or maybe just doesn't have the 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 power for um mm -hmm. like to to maintain it or whatever you know like whether it's ultra instinct or even even fucking like even when he was doing when he went super sand for the first time or whatever like during frieza like like after that he just had to kind of control it or whatever like or not not control super sand but more so like just be able to maintain the form. So like, I don't know. Like with the with the whole Bardock thing, I don't think. I'm I'm just gonna say I don't think he probably went Super Saiyan. Maybe he just he he was just stronger than Gas at that point or some shit. Like, and Vegeta was <laughs> downplaying like Bardock's actual strength, saying he was a low class warrior type of thing. You know. Well, let me tell you. I that's a, that's. A, these are great these are great starting points that you bring up everything you said is very legitimate and accurate when it comes down to how everything is laid out before us right and here's where we're going to take it to the next level because when i said and thought the same thing that you were pretty much saying right like yo did he go super saiyan right that's the big question right i think he did something even better than that and here's what it is i feel like if anything and based on how they have been kind of planting these seeds all throughout these recent arcs with how things have been going, I feel like there's a good chance that Bardock may have pulled a Broly. And I feel like this guy, because let's not forget, he does have a tail. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're not right. He you're not wrong. did not get rid of it. And we already know that this guy was able to, of course, tap into his great ape form while on said planet cereal. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. <laughs> don't tell me you're trying to say he, he low-key was Super Saiyan 4 now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Dude. about all that. Now, hold on, though. Hold I'll, on, though. I'll let you here, look, 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 look. Listen, listen, listen. Because hear me out, right? The thing that I want to also throw out there right is that i'm fully aware that most of the things that i like to talk about when it comes to the possibilities of what could happen in this story are just based off of 
the things that are planted before me okay like if you if you say i will pay attention to your dialogue to the the time frame of when things happen and so on and so forth right i will look at all of those things and i will look at how other things have turned out with the story so far i will use so many different examples to justify what ever it is that i'm trying to say but i will at least do it within reason like i'm not gonna ever say some super wild shit like oh this dude went super saiyan 10 and fused with a fucking future version of himself like you know i'm not gonna say some super mm -hmm. dragon ball heroes head assery like that okay you're never gonna i'm always going to provide you guys with with critical thinking justification evidence all that kind of stuff to back anything that even if it's an imagination or a thought process that i have because i could tell you what sounds like super dragon ball heroes and i could tell you what sounds kind of reasonable too too very reasonable based on what has happened so far mm -hmm. okay so here it goes the fact of the the fact of the matter is okay dragon ball has actually as as cookie cutter as it is has hit us <clears throat> during a couple moments or actually yeah, a little bit more than a couple moments throughout the the, the the series it's lifespan with some surprises okay because at certain at certain points there will be a threshold right there will be like a ceiling of knowledge that one could have with all with knowing all of the things that dragon ball has had to offer so when it comes to like understanding uh, f uh like you know like matchups and who's stronger than who or forms or power-ups anything along those lines how like certain things work um established rules like 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 for example fusion right fusion is one of the biggest things that i will always go back to in reference because why that was one of the things that we for the longest time guys this is over a decade worth of time that fans alike believed that they fully understood how fusion works okay because there's two forms of fusion that we understand and it is the natural fusion dance way and then of course there's patara and i guess you can also throw in the the namekian style where they just combine as many fucking namekians as they want to make like a super namekian like with nail and you know what they did with piccolo right so there you go you have three examples now obviously we're we're paying more attention to the first two that i just named with the fusion dance and the patara right so with the fusion dance okay it was understood and explained to us that fusion only lasts a certain amount of time when you do the normal dance you have half an hour 30 minutes and that's it and when you power up while fused that time is decreased heavily we see examples of that with go tanks and we also see examples of that with vegeto i'll get to that and we also see examples even with gogeta in gt okay because man straight up was was a super saiyan 4 off rip <laughs> in gt and look how long that fusion lasted okay go tanks this kid fucking lasted a bunch of episodes okay G gogeta and gt lasted one mm -hmm. okay <laughs> just to kind of give you guys some perspective now i go back to vegeta really quick because why because his was more more important as far as this whole conversation of understanding thing or thinking that we understood something when realistically we didn't okay because back then we understood Patara Fusion as permanent, yeah. okay? And it was believed that with that fusion, that because of what happened by getting absorbed by Majin Buu, something within his, you know, the chemicals inside the character, however way you want to understand it, it was because of some shit in there that defused them that pretty much overwrote the patara ruling but it wasn't that at all it's because if you're a mortal you have a time limit and we didn't learn that until when 
the Goku Black Arc Future Trunks when they whipped out Vegito for the second time in all of the Dragon Ball history canonically. This man came out and it was who was it? It was uh was it the grand was it the supreme the grand supreme Kai or it was one of those one, one of those higher beings that they said that no it's not permanent if you're a mortal being you have an hour with the patara earrings and uh. literally one of the biggest mind fuck moments because again we thought we understood that shit from dragon ball z for all those years and just like that they flipped the script on us and literally was like nope it's actually like this so i use that example to kind of uh provide you guys with a little bit of basis off of how i'm th I, what i'm about to where i'm about to go to with this which could happen um if they decide to go this route which again i still understand this is a very it's a stretch but hear me out okay so going back to this bardock situation with fighting gas manito kind of alludes that even then before this greatest strongest in the universe wish took place okay he even he even says like oh quite the contrary like it was the opposite like this guy was super strong but and then they cut him off so they're trying to clearly tease something they're trying to clearly tease that they gave us the win result they they already told us the the outcome was bardock bardock won so how did he win if gas is so strong right yeah, 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 yeah. so how do you have a a, a, a quote-unquote low-class saiyan believed to be a low-class saiyan let me guys let me remind y'all this is the goku family line here okay <laughs> these 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 dudes that were believed to be low class really wasn't about that life they were strong okay and we obviously didn't really get to see too obviously too much of bardock i mean if you want to count the the, the story of bardock or whatever as something as a basis to look at him in action or if you want to you know see him in video games that's different right but we never saw this dude actually have some type of big threat fight we've only really seen him die unfortunately right mm -hmm. that is ultimately like what he's always been shown to you know be a part of is that eradication of the sands so when it comes to this fight that we know that he won but we also get confirmation that gas was od as shit like he wasn't weak at all it kind of it, it, it kind of implies that something special and crazy happened here and I feel like when a Saiyan with his back against the wall, <laughs> when he's trying to protect something or somebody that he cares about, when all those things happen, something crazy goes on. And let me tell you, let me tell you, I can, I can at least see this dude at least going into his ape form. Okay. I can at least see that happening, but I'm telling you. I feel like he went further beyond that and he he maintained that power and quite possibly we could see that primal instinct that Super Saiyan 4 look get applied to Bardock before Broly. Well, but the, it, yeah, I know what you're saying because <laughs> we look he had a conversation like regarding the tail and shit already. And, yes. and how we think about it but like as far as the whole primal instinct and shit it being naturalized um as far as like being able to control the the inner what's it called the beast fucking the yeah the ozaru, the ozaru the yeah to be able to control it and being in your normal like humanized form aka primal instinct whatever you want to call it super saiyan 4 like like it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense to me personally especially him traveling back to planet vegeta and then going against frieza and shit because and then we see like no hint of that like it it, it wouldn't make sense for him to be able to tap into it but then like we don't see that type of power against frieza per se but then 
like all all i would be able to honestly think about is like yeah he had his tail so like maybe he got some i'm not gonna say he went primal instinct like we're like you're kind of predicting but like maybe he he got like some type of broly boost type of type of feel like where he was fighting gas and he just got stronger throughout the fight type of thing but he never tapped into mm. super saiyan or primal Instinct. right that th that's as far as i would go like he got stronger throughout the fight and was able to to beat him because of because that's the sand blood and that's just the power of having the ozaro inside of you with the tail and everything like that that's that's okay. what I w that's how that's as far as I think I would go because <laughs> because it wouldn't make sense it wouldn't make sense if he actually tapped into Super Saiyan or Primal Instinct it, before Frieza especially because oh I got something for that too don't worry because because if that was the case then Frieza wouldn't be shit and Bardock would probably still be alive so but oh but wait but wait there's more so uh, okay. well let me well hold on you said some other good points too to that so to that what you were just saying right i think what you're saying well, there's some truth to what you're saying as well and that actually amplifies my thought um because right because usually we've also seen this in the history right is that whenever there's a new form that's about to be like seen or had usually sometimes there's kind of like a precursor form you know there's like a oh uh, there, there's like a like a pr um uh like what's, what's the word i'm looking for it's it, it's kind of like uh you're warming up to it type <laughs> of stuff you know so no like level. yeah so here's the thing right and again i'm telling you i can i can link this shit back i can use more examples because goku did not have a tail when he was pushed to his limit, when fucking when it took Krillin to explode into pieces, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he went Super Saiyan. Okay, now he didn't have a tail, so he didn't have that Ozaru shit. He just went Super Saiyan. Now clearly, every Saiyan is different. Everyone reacts differently. Everyone has you know some some can be similar, some can be different. Broly, on the other hand, his power is overflowing. So yeah. for his example is that not only was he most certainly stronger than Goku during the time when Goku fought Frieza, but Broly at that point when they fought, all right, he didn't tap into Super Saiyan first. When they were fighting him in their Super Saiyan forms, in their Super Saiyan God forms, in their Super Saiyan Blue forms, this dude was just getting stronger in his base state. And then it, it went to the point where when it came time to push even further beyond, that's when he did tap into the, his great ape shit yeah, because I, I feel like for Broly specifically, it, it has everything to do with his overflowing power. You know, having, having these conversations about the whole tail subject, man, it like... It really makes you think, honestly, exactly. because no, no, because saying. like, because like, no, it, it makes it makes me personally now rethink the whole Super Saiyan shit. Because like, what exactly. what if, and this is just a hypothesis, honestly. <laughs> so <laughs> what like what if, like Goku essentially going Super Saiyan for the first time against Frieza? Like, what if that's only like half of what could have been, like if exactly. he had his yes. tail. Dude, that, that, that's precisely what I'm trying to get to. That's literally exactly what I'm saying because look at what happened with that fight, okay? Obviously, he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Frieza, right, when he finally transformed into Super Saiyan for the first time. But then look at what happened when Broly, a guy that whose power structure is completely different yeah. from Goku's, look at what happened when he finally got off his first good fight against other powerful beings that were on godlike level literally they were using a god source of power use it, use it, yeah just, just uh. <laughs> nah, <laughs> because like just because I, I keep thinking about this shit this is fucking ridiculous but like honestly 
the reason I feel like the the pure reason why I think Broly is so strong is because he has like that second hand help, which is the Ozaru inside of him. Goku doesn't have that shit inside of him anymore, essentially, because he doesn't have this tail. So like, like, and it, it and when you put it like that, that's why I feel that like having these stocks, it's like regular Super Saiyan, like for Goku or whatever, it's like half of what he could become because he he doesn't have that. Like, bro, essentially, like, put it put it this way. I'm gonna use Naruto as an example. Okay. This nigga has the Nine Tails, <laughs> uh -huh. like to to basically boost him up, like boost his boost any type of um jutsu he's doing or just overall just, stats. Overall yeah. stats, yes, significant boosts. Like right. that's that's like, and now now go back to Broly. The, the Ozaru essentially is like the Nine Tails. That's how I feel. Mm, it's okay. like a, it's a, it's an overflowing boost of power that Broly mm -hmm. himself cannot control. And whenever mm -hmm. Broly's back is behind the wall, the Ozaru takes control, and that is hence why he has white eyes. And that is just my opinion. Right. <laughs> but but Goku, on the other hand, when he goes Super Saiyan, etc., he never has white eyes. He's always kind of in a controlled state, even though he might not be in control hitting it for the first time, but like his sense is there. It's like his subconscious is there type of thing. But like Broly on the other hand, it, it's he he's out. It's the Ozaru taking over. That's my personal thought, honestly. Yo, you know, okay, so oh man, this episode's gonna be long, but I don't even care because this is a good conversation because <laughs> I, I we're feeding off each other and that's fucking what I love about doing this and i want to i want to add to that right so it makes me wonder because if we're going to believe that super saiyan uh like levels i guess if we're going to believe that these are not really just i mean you know just transformations i want to i want to understand them more as like power boosts like zenkai boosts realistically right these are just power boosts in a sense obviously whenever you get a new transformation in anime all your shit goes up you know yeah. your your speed your your attack your power all that kind of stuff it goes up instantly okay but but going off of what you said where it's just like even though super saiyan at the time was believed to be od strong which it is for what you know for what it's worth okay like goku for that time back in the day he needed to go tap into that type of power he needed that kind of a power boost in order to defeat Frieza. Yeah. But look at how look at how easy Broly handled Frieza. Even when he was gold. Okay? Like the powers, the power difference, there is no comparison. If Goku fought Broly during that time, Broly would have killed him for free. 100%. Easily. Yeah, no, One ex yeah, like it, it makes sense because like and this is the difference between having a beast inside of you and not having a beast inside of you anymore. Apparent, I guess if we're gonna take it there and use and and go off of based off of that essentially, because I guess once you cut off the tail, you don't have the Ozaru inside of you anymore yet. <laughs> so, well, wait, now, well, now, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let, so let me, let me, let me, let me, let me finish what I was trying uh, to get to yeah, before yeah. because this is important, right? Okay. So. So the whole, the, so it, it makes you wonder like, well, how come when they power up, they just go blonde, like their hair is gold and spiky and all this shit. And I think it does have something to do with the Ozaru itself, right? The grade eight power, because if you look at GT and I know people hate looking at GT, but this is the only place I have something the source here that has actually, we've seen it like actually happen is what when they had baby vegeta go into the ozaru state that wasn't that shit gold um let me see i'm when, I'm when a... baby went into ozaru didn't baby take over vegeta's body that's yeah so yeah so when he was baby vegeta and then he became or no yeah, yeah, yeah. he became he be, he he became an ozaru yeah himself. And then, yeah okay yeah and then it was but then it but then it was goku right that also became an ozaru because they pulled his tail back out right yeah so when goku went when goku powered up to his 
Ozaru. And now, and now, and now, now figure this, right? Goku has been through years and years and years of fighting, training, powering up what he has. So he basically evolved his Super Saiyan from one to two to three. So when he went great ape, didn't his great ape also go gold as well? So I low key know what you're talking about. I just forget how that happened. Like, I'm not sure if he was regular great ape. And then I'm because I'm pretty sure he was regular normal Ozaru state. And then and then he was tapping into like his humanized type of like he was getting into his feelings. Like you, you could tell um, that like he was kind of coming to his senses while in Ozaru form. But and I'm pretty sure he actually like kind of went essentially Super Saiyan or whatever the case in Ozaru form. But then at that point, he was coming back to his senses and kind of controlling it. And then that's essentially when he won Super Saiyan 4. But yo, but listen to me. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Because <clears throat> I just looked it up just to be 100% sure. And yes, I am correct. Goku went golden grade ape. That's literally what it's called. Yeah. Okay. That's what they, that's what they called it, right? What if this entire time... It is maybe we can believe that when a Saiyan that is, you know, that has, that is talented, that is gifted, that, it, you know, that's constantly training, that is getting stronger. Because obviously, as we know, Saiyans get stronger with every fucking fight that they have, right? He's going through all these motions. And because the link to his natural, primal innate form that that power source that is deep within themselves maybe if that link is essentially cut which through the tails they, they got rid of them right what if if they put in all that time they still of course when they go through all the you know the the the, the motions of trying to transform or whatever they are essentially that's how they get that golden hair that's where it comes from mm. that is a that's a it's just a food for thought right <laughs> but because think about it as we see the super saiyan transformations advance right you go from one to two to three three specifically you start to see a more of a physical facial difference yeah and goku looks more like a fucking monkey mm -hmm. in super <laughs> saiyan 3 so one could believe that if they were to take that form even further you know they <laughs> would it's assumed that they would look closer to a monkey or an ape super you know <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so so that's the thing. Like, so back, back during that time, they obviously could just call it Super Saiyan Four because that was just what what came next. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, even if that is to, if that's the actual order still with whatever new stuff that they decide to give us later round, down the road, sure, you know. But I, you know, I'm just trying to make a point here. I'm just trying to link all things together to make some sort of sense that maybe what we've believed to be is actually still all rooted within how Saiyans, you know, whether they cut their, their tie to their true power or not, that's almost like they are forcing themselves into it. Like they, they're, they're getting, they're getting a version of what could have been. And in their, and in their defense, I, yo, I'm telling you, I really feel like they would, like if, if Goku had a tail when he was fighting Frieza, and Krillin explodes. I I'm t I feel like he would have fucking went. He would have tapped into that that Ozaru. Honestly, bro, I feel if Goku had a tail throughout that whole exchange and everything like that throughout the Frieza saga and shit, I feel like he honestly would have probably like progressed like in strength, like just in a base form like Broly, essentially just fighting Frieza. And like, yeah. I'm not saying he might have. Like, I'm not saying he would have beat him naturally, maybe, but, like, you know, you know, you know how Broly got, like, yeah, like, like man fucking bulldozed his way through eventually, like, without even having to go Super Saiyan, like, yeah, dude, so, like, ima That's imagine if saying. Goku had the tail and he had, in like, it, like, essentially the same thing 
kind of happens to where Go when Goku's yeah. fighting Frieza and Frieza's stronger than Goku, like unless unless Frieza actually like takes full advantage and, and tries to like kill Goku like as fast as possible mm -hmm. before he gets stronger than him. Yeah. Then like then there's that, but uh yeah. Yeah. Like I mean that's that's honestly one of the only ways to really beat um like essentially Broly, I'll use Broly since he has his tail. Like you have to like put him down like before he exceeds you because he will. Yeah, he don't even have his tail <laughs> right now. That's another thing. Shit. He he God, this is this is this is literally what I'm trying to say. Like they they set all of this up to really make us have some crazy hurrah! Wow, this is actually how it works, and that's how that's the understanding that I'm making of everything going forward. I really truly feel like with these Saiyans, their true strength and their absolute potential lies within their own natural power i mean you gotta think though too but, i mean broly's hair is green and i don't know if that fucking means anything <laughs> well uh i mean like well, it's during super saiyan at least like true super saiyan oh, if that's what they call oh. it oh when he was like full power super yeah, saiyan full power super saiyan i, yeah, I so don't that know was I don't another know. thing i don't know if the green hair actually resembles like full power super saiyan or whatever the case may be but or, or like you know, maybe the Ozaru, the Oza, like the Ozaru, uh, Super Saiyan state. Maybe I don't know if you want to go there, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't so, know if the hair color actually means something, or if it's just like whatever. It's just well, his I design. Mean, the hair color is always indicative of like how strong the person is. Like it's 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 definitely like a physical trait as like a like an indicator to be like oh like he's this much stronger now based on what color hair he's got so from our understanding right we've always believed like yeah super saiyan being gold is like you know it's pretty strong but then the second he's going super saiyan god and that shit's red oh fuck like that's gonna shit on super saiyan and oh man <laughs> super saiyan blue like blue is crazier than red and and then next thing you know he's going mastered ultra instinct that shit is white yeah, now why it's just OD, but like, but like, just go back, go back to, to fucking Broly's green, like, you, you, you like, everyone just gotta put it in perspective, man, like, this man only lands Super Saiyan, and he's matching up against Super Saiyan Blue, like, yep, so like, that, uh, like, but then that goes back to my statement of, of literally an, uh, an Ozaru boosted Super Saiyan form, <laughs> like, basically mm -hmm. kind of using the naruto example like fucking karama essentially significantly boosts naruto's fucking rasengan for example like <laughs> the times 100 <laughs> makes it a fucking spirit bomb like <laughs> yeah like yeah, yeah. like this is this is this is the comparison i'm using towards broly turning like transforming essentially to super saiyan but not being in control therefore that well, yeah, man, I feel like I, I, I mean, I mean, even with the Super Saiyan green shit, like when he was full power Super Saiyan, like I feel like that could potentially be like the technically the next color, if you will, because like they get the red from the God form. Clearly, they from the God power, the hair goes red. It happened with Vegeta, happened with Goku. Right. And the, obviously when they power up with Super Saiyan, because let's not forget, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan was definitely the name originally before they just called it Super Saiyan Blue. That is exactly what it is. They just powered up, like they, they, they powered up from a Super Saiyan God using Super Saiyan as a boost to essentially just, you know, become that next stage or form, whatever. And boom, they're just got blue hair now. Yeah, no, like, All right. I, I, guess, I guess what I'm really trying to say is though, like, because if Broly's in this state, like, and that strong as a fucking regular Super Saiyan, mind you, but he has an Azaro inside of him, then, like, wouldn't you expect Goku and or Vegeta or just anyone in general that can turn Super Saiyan to be that strong or to be able to reach that, that, that type of strength? Just Yeah, but, but yeah, so yeah. that's the thing. That's the thing, though. Like, bro, like, Broly had an advantage 
whether you want to call it an advantage or not it's like you know it's like it's a double-edged sword like you said in the last episode because bro Bro broly has something like okay goku and vegeta right they're pretty much like i'm not i don't want to call them your average saiyans because they're definitely not average they're very strong they're definitely elite warriors of that race and they're they're clearly talented and gifted naturally right however they are not by any means on the same level of prowess that broly was fucking born with from the beginning yeah no broly okay? was born with yeah. <laughs> and that and, and and that's what separates the three of them okay or him from them too because he has a clear 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 different like even even uh being brought up right because they didn't even say at what age paragus got rid of his tail even if it was very young he still had all this power yeah that is that is actually fucking crazy now that you mentioned yeah like that's what i'm saying like they were all brought up differently and even with all of the fights and the experience that the goku and vegeta had over broly or has over broly the point is even the experience didn't matter they had to resort to something even stronger than themselves which is fusing <laughs> right like they had to do that just to get to this guy and that says a lot about how strong broly fucking is like it, it, like it, it, you can't you cannot slice it any other way like this guy was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these dudes like i've said it a million different ways so many different I times mean, already shit. i just i just wonder how how he would do against like an ultra instinct fucking goku type of thing i'm sure we might see that at some point because but... like then that would that that'll really just tell the tale kind of like on like the power scale and and like just in general like shit about broly in general like maybe like maybe this man's just a fucking demon bruh <laughs> like, clearly like i mean because he would like come like born out the wound or whatever this man this man like his ozaru or whatever the case may be if you want to just use that like was always out of control kind of like yeah like i don't and and like i don't know I don't know how far I want to take it, <laughs> but like, like what, what, this is, this is a dumb stretch, but like, what if like every sand has their own type of Ozaru? Like what, like essentially oh, saying, like unique? Yeah, kind of, I guess. Like, I guess Broly's in this case is just a raging Ozaru, like that just oh, gives man, him yeah. this power. And then I don't like Goku and Vegeta's. I guess Ozaru is just fucking regular, <laughs> like or just non-existent. Yeah. Like, like it's like I don't know. Like I don't, I don't know like where I would take that honestly, because there's no like actual evidence, or I would say, like, like I I like I I would say there's not enough evidence to say that there's different type of unique ozarus i would say that that's kind of what i'm trying to say but i'm saying it seems like there's a possibility though just like just just seeing how the power scaling between like a regular broly and then goku and vegeta like the just just using the three of them as an example like broly was the most outstanding on the power scale and mm -hmm. and i mean i would i would think it's because of his ozaru because what else is giving him all that power and then like well goku and vegeta like they like they they just get their power from training and really fighting like naturally like over time type of thing like it's well not... hold on but but what's giving broly his power is his overflowing power that's the thing his natural overflowing power like because remember like even with he, uh, like think of the the ozaru right as like that is naturally what these saiyans are known and meant to transform into when they look at a moon right think of the moon as their their fucking hack okay they look at that shit the bloods wave that emits off of these moons essentially allow them to access this form but i feel like if broly still had his tail 
he would be able to go into that without the fucking moon yeah. right <laughs> that's what i'm saying that is what separates him from goku and, and vegeta or any other saiyan for that matter because that is naturally how their power is tapped into more accessibly without going through some sort of rigorous kind of training because let's be honest think of think of the saiyan race as just uh, you know any other race in the universe where over time they naturally evolve like any and like anything else so if they're if they're a warrior race that every time they get strong every time they fight they get stronger who's to say that at some generation of saiyan right there is that one guy that brings about the idea that yo we don't even need moons anymore bro <laughs> and <laughs> like like sure like you can look at a moon and that's cheating right imagine a world where the saiyans were still existed and like generations down down the line they're having like their own little world tournaments and the moon they they, they have it so that there is like the, the moon does not shine in on the planet and they have to fight r on their own raw strength and basically the way they do it is they're so strong at that point that they don't need the moon so even if they did have the moon, it would be another stack on top of that. You feel me? Mm, I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> Dude, this shit, there's like so many like I guess hypotheses and shit. They're just ideas more so. I wouldn't. I I don't I don't like oh I don't like stretching that shit. <laughs> it was like well, endless good ideas or or thoughts I would say that could like it can go either way honestly. Yeah, like so, I mean, in a logical could, we, standpoint. Yeah, I mean, we could like we could uh, we could talk more about this in the next episode, um, just because like this kind of a topic is so weighted that it could go, it, it can go in any which way. So, I will bring it back to the original Bardock stuff real quick, and then we can go over this comment that we have from last week, and then then wrap up this episode entirely. But. But the idea of Bardock being one of the first ones to access or, or to to be living proof of the theories that I'm having about how all this shit works. I feel like with this fight that he has with gas, I think definitely that there was there's there's no doubt that something unique and special happened. Whether he transformed into an ape and maintained that uh that kind of state of mind or he just went straight to that type of you know super saiyan 4s kind of thing or whatever that's that's obviously remained to be seen and i'm and i'm hoping we do see that fucking back that 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 uh that backstory segment in the manga i'm, I'm really hoping we do see that but to what you said before about how like you see where i'm coming from but then it wouldn't make sense because then like if he like normally when Saiyans access stuff like this, it's because their backs are turned up against the wall and they have nothing else to, and like you know they naturally like like they get stronger with every fight. And this is like Bardock's big hurrah moment, kind of like with you know every any other Saiyan that went through some shit in the middle of a fight, and then boom, there goes their next power up. Right? Mm -hmm. It's anime as fuck. Right? Why? So to what you were saying, we were like, if that's the case, then why wouldn't this happen again? When you know him and the rest of his race was about to get fucking blown up to bits yeah. by Frieza, right? So, here's my response to that real quick, right? And if this is something that's going to trigger a long response from you, just <laughs> <laughs> just save it, write it down, do what you got to do, and we will bring it back up in the next episode because uh, I don't want to make this one too much longer uh, than what it is already at right now, okay? So pretty much to that, I feel like if they were to ever have an idea or they wanted to write in some kind of explanation to have Bardock be alive, maybe, and this again is a huge stretch, probably bigger than what we've already been talking about, is that when that happened, when you know Frieza was this, you know about to blow them all up, and you know everyone's dying and everything, and the plan, maybe some crazy shit happened with Bardock that had something to do with this 
this this this transformation <laughs> or this 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 power that he's got and maybe something allowed him to just fucking get somewhere else far away that obviously you know would make frieza believe like oh yeah like everyone's dead here you know what i'm saying but again huge stretch what like a break in dimension type of thing Low well key. yeah i mean because because the thing is is like the reason why i would even bring that up as an idea is because like it's always the things that we don't really expect to happen but isn't that yo, are you trying to loki use the you remember the the fucking universe battle or whatever when goku like essentially disappeared and then came back as ultra instinct right or some shit oh see th <laughs> okay i'm not even gonna <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I was not even thinking about that shit. Cause that's but, the first thing that came into my mind. Like hey. if, if you're gonna actually use that shit, or, or yeah, cause that doesn't even, that never even made sense. Even when that shit like happened, they in the broke anime. they broke a dimension or some shit. Or I don't even know what the, I, I for, kind of forget exactly what happened there. <laughs> but all I know is this man came back from another dimension or some shit. Er Yo, literally, Jesus no jutsu. He, he came out of nothing, literally. But I mean, like, if that was to happen at Bardock, man. Yo, I'm t dude, like father, like son. I'm telling you, it, we saw we saw it happen with Goku, and we saw it happen in Super. Okay, so who's to say? <laughs> who's to say that something similar could have happened to Bardock? And I mean, but then of course, I'm sure the next question would be, oh, then what has we been doing this whole time? Well, that of course is obviously remain to be seen if that, if they even go there, because if anything, this is the arc where we would get a tease that this guy is still around. Imagine. So. That'd be fucking retarded. <laughs> well, not retarded, but <laughs> that'd be fucking crazy. Uh -huh. I mean, that would just bring up fucking more fucking questions yeah that shit would be fire so <laughs> so yeah so so there's your i hope you guys enjoyed your grand chapter review with a lot of extra sauce and sides to this freaking conversation because that was that was de definitely uh od for sure so yeah let's get into some of these comments how many comments was there um only a few but only real only one that really was like that 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 added to the or that was a response to some of the things that we we're talking about and actually this is it's, it's nice because it's not it has nothing to do with uh with dragon ball it actually has everything to do with spider-man and mm -hmm. and some of the things that we were talking about last week so they go on to say hey love that you brought up spider-man it's good to see that the podcast going full power and all the good shit the movie is going to be dope we know it and as the day nears all we can do is just get hyped something i wanted to tell other than the X-Men parallel is that if according to how Doc Ock reacted to Tom not being his Spider-Man, so they're obviously referring to the trailer um, for No Way Home. If the cast members are specific to their own universes, how did J.K. Simmons reach our universe and Far From Home itself? So that's an easy answer, to be honest. Um, we've already seen with, uh, with how they handled it with Loki that you can have like, you know, your variants look different or the same they can even be different sex they could even be fucking animals for some how i don't know how that works out but every universe is unique within how they want to handle a certain character and much like how there's a universe where spider-man is technically gwen stacy with spider gwen and how there's another one with Miles, and there's another one with Peter. There's a bunch of other different ones with Peter and whatever. Like, with the whole uh, uh, J.K. Simmons thing, that could, that's easy. He, he, he could have his variants literally all, you know, they, they look like the same actor, which is obviously the same person here as well. Mm. Um, yeah, did, did you want to say anything else or no? No, no, no. Okay. So then uh, they go on to also say, what I believe is that as Wanda, okay, this is gonna be good. 
is that Wanda has already been told to be the villain of Multiverse of Madness. I did hear about this. Um, so yeah, so basically uh, it's rumored that Wanda um, is the villain for Multiverse of Madness. So that's basically Doctor Strange 2, his movie, which comes out next year. And that's just LOD, right? Um, and the post credits of WandaVision showed us Wanda has been searching for her children through different universes. And while going through those, she accidentally started bringing people through in the MCU. For example, JK said, okay, so that's what he feels like might have happened. Okay. And then they go to say, and when she thought she needs more power to do this, she has secretly manipulated Strange to do her bidding while he was helping Peter. She made him open up the multiverse. And due to that, more people started coming through like all the Spidey villains. So this mess isn't Strange or Peter's actions. It's actually secretly Wanda. And we have been told that her powers exceed that of the Sorcerer Supreme himself. So it just makes sense how it ties into Doctor Strange too. What do you think about that? That's just crazy. If it was Wanda the entire time that fucked with all this shit. Wanda? No, did you did you watch WandaVision? You definitely watched WandaVision. I told you guys to watch WandaVision. I don't know if I finished. I don't, I don't think I finished the whole thing. Dude, it was so short. I Basically, remember. Like, yeah, I kind of remember a little bit though. She's broken. She yeah. She like fucking. She doesn't like rip time or nothing though, right? Well, or does she? Oh. Uh, I, I, well. I kind of forget. Well, I remember but forget at the same time. <laughs> yeah, like I don't. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really know the the exact like response to explain how all of her powers do work but i can tell you that she's strong enough to essentially like do whatever she wants with her the, yeah, with, like, the, didn't with she space fucking, around her yeah didn't she fucking like make her own fucking bubble that exact yes she essentially took a small town and basically controlled the whole fucking Men town yes mentally controlled everybody within it and also uh hit it from the rest of the world yeah nah, that's mm -hmm. fucking crazy yeah so that would be kind of crazy if wanda actually tampered with this whole thing that dr strange is doing because that would be a direct you know connection how fucking crazy that sounds <laughs> yes because if, if this whole thing with her being the villain for his movie dude this is this she's is where you villain? start it no 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 she she yeah, would be the, the villain. villain she's put that's what the rumor is that she is the is the villain in the next doctor strange movie which is already called multiverse of madness bruh <laughs> bruh so you're gonna you're gonna like this next part. This is the last part of this comment. Uh, they say I also agree with Brother Ooch completely. They have made Hulk a pussy. <laughs> My man Hulk has exploded planets with his thunderclap in the comics and in an alternate reality, wiped all the heroes and villains in his world and took over Earth single-handedly. This man needs redemption. Wow. Wait, say that shit one more time. Yeah, well, I was like, did you not hear what I just said? Like. He was so OD in the comics, he exploded planets with his thunderclap, and in another reality, he wiped out all the heroes and all the villains in his world, and he took over Earth by himself single-handedly. Wait, what character okay, are we talking about? Hulk! Oh, fuck. <laughs> this is your boy. Guy. Like, yeah. Was my guy. Shit. It's, I mean, yeah, man, I don't know. But hey, hey, even, so let's just, for the benefit of the doubt, man, let's just say this Bruce Banner on this, on this earth is like, you know, he is the way that he is, right? However, who's to say that other, other Bruce Banners around, other oh, universes, shit. other Hulks? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Bring them over. <laughs> <laughs> Replace ours. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. But... Yeah, man, that dude, like, I'm all for... I'm all for seeing Hulk in his natural beastly fucking mannerisms like because the the Hulk the direction and it is crazy because they haven't made a standalone Hulk movie since the one that set up 
the Avengers in the first place. Like, and that was a different actor. So technically, I mean, that movie, I would still say has precedence even now. Because, you know, now that we understand what variants are and stuff like that, you know, like that same thing could be applied even with that so they could get that guy back too if they wanted to i mean they can afford everybody they they, they can afford everybody they want to as actors and in, in any of their movies going forward so like yeah i i think that it's a shame that we haven't seen anything since that film and then ever since hulk made his debut in the first avengers movie it, it, it's it's kind of been a letdown i guess because he's only been a featured character he's never been like a focus he's never had his solo moment his solo film and the fucked up part is is even looking into the future they're making a she hulk tv show where he of course is going to be a side character in that as well hmm. so kind of fucked up but you know I wonder why. Like, I was like, why Why don't they do more with Hulk? I just don't get it. Yeah, I never got it. <laughs> mm. I don't know, man. I mean, hopefully, hopefully now that uh, they're going to involve more, you know, superhero characters in general, now that they got, like, you know, the Fantastic Four and X-Men and Deadpool, I'm hoping now that they can kind of make Hulk a better character now that they have access to those storylines and characters and all that stuff because i know there's some crazy shit that does happen between hulk and uh, wolverine so i would love to see that you know at some point yeah 100 <laughs> percent. yeah but uh but yeah that's everything that's that's basically like our our one solid comment of uh for this week um and you guys are definitely uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this doozy of an episode because normally i like I, I like to try to keep these to you know an hour average maybe an hour and change but <laughs> y'all getting close to two this time around so i hope you guys uh enjoyed this one for sure and again as a reminder if you guys are looking forward or would like to hear us talk about anything or would if you would like any any uh explanations elaborated feel free to let us know in the comments under youtube um or in the uh section under spotify because there are polls or of course you can definitely reach out directly via the email which is fullpowerpod at gmail.com once again fullpowerpod at gmail.com brother Uch, is there anything that you want to leave with the folks before we sign out completely just stay fresh, stay clean. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. Well, uh, off of that, guys, like the man said, stay clean, stay fresh, stay the hell inside. Be easy. Have yourselves a happy holidays. And we will see you guys next time.